Hello and welcome to another BlenderBranch.com tutorial. I'm Kenan Prophet, and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a fun visual effect tip how to use the plane tracker feature in Blender. So this is really easy and it has so many applications uh, for so many things in Blender. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to use the motion tracking tab here in the top left hand side and open up our footage. And you want to use footage that has four distinguishable distinguishable points that you can track and a, a plane that you want to replace. So it can be any size, shape, plane, uh, as long as it has four points. Because uh, currently the plane tracker, that's the limit, is uh, four corners. <laughs> so we have this billboard here. Uh, this is footage I've taken right outside of Dallas, Texas, my hometown. And um, I'm going to start on frame 32, because I know the first part of my footage is a little bit blurry. And we'll end at frame 250, that's fine. And in the left hand side we want to hit prefetch to cache in all those frames. Now once we've done that, we want to uh, replace this lovely dentistry billboard with uh, something kind of a alien apocalyptic type of thing. So we need to track four very high points of contrast. So I see this little dot on the eye here. I'm going to put a track in on that. So to do that, hold down control and left click. And you can scale it in a bit. And I'll zoom out to show you what we're doing here. You can see on the right hand side that track is in place. And we'll come down underneath track and track forward. And you can see it tracked that dot perfectly. So that's good. I'm, I'll jump back to frame one. I'm going to track this area up here, maybe top of this pole, hold down control, left click, scale in a bit. You want to make sure that you don't just have points that are on the actual plane that you want to track. It's good to have points outside as well. So that one tracked pretty well. Um, I'm going to try this other dot of the eye right here, control left click and scale in and track forward. Oh, that one tracked very quickly and no problems okay one last track let's see if we can't track the very corner of this billboard right about here it's a pretty high point contrast it might stay on there it might not it's getting a little blurry there and it did okay kind of surprised about that all right so that's it um we we're finished with the tracking part of it which is great if you watch any of my tutorials, you know uh, I don't like um, camera tracking a whole lot. <laughs> and so that's one of the reasons why I like this method is you can just have four points and you're done. I have an issue here with this track. Oh, it got off. I'm not sure how it did that. Okay, so it's on frame 39. I'm going to track backwards. So I'm going to grab this track, move it into position, and track backwards. Okay, that took care of that. You want to make sure all your tracks stay on point throughout the duration of your footage because that is very important for uh, how realistic your image replacement looks. All right. So now we're ready to drop in the plane, and this is really easy, and it's a lot of fun. All we have to do is select all four tracks by pressing A, come underneath Solve, underneath Plane Track, Create Plane Track. And this will only be available, by the way, if you are using a version of Blender newer than 2.69, I believe. So I think that's when this feature first came out. And uh, I mean, I assume you are. Most people up upgrade. Okay, now we're just using the left left click to move these points into position in proportion to our billboard. And you want to make sure that it's on frame one for this. Okay, so that's pretty good. All four corners matching up. Now we don't have to do anything else. It automatically parents to those points. So we can scrub through our footage and see that plane being deformed perfectly in proportion to our footage. Really, really exciting and just uh, so easy. So now what we can do is come up to the compositing node 
check use nodes and backdrop. I'm going to uh, move this render layer out of the way for now. Press N to give us some more space here. I'll also change this bottom left hand side to our timeline. And now I'll press Shift A, add in a movie clip node. And underneath that drop down menu, we have our footage. And we can view this by pressing Control Shift and clicking. And now I want this to be the proper scale, so I'll press Shift A and search for a scale node, drop that in, change it from relative to render size. Move these two nodes out of the way for now. And now we want to add in a plane track deform node. This is where things start to get exciting. This is really a fantastic node. If you take a look at it, it has um, a couple of things. We have an image output for it and an image input, so we can put any image fed directly into this output and the plane uh, node you see out here this output is essentially the mask so it creates an area for you to put an image and it also creates a mask in the background and I'll show you in a second how valuable that can be so what we want to do with this node is select our footage and underneath this parenting menu select our camera that little squiggly line, that's our track, so if you had multiple tracks going on, you would want to name them and select the appropriate track for your footage. And now we want to drop in an alpha over node, plug that in, take the image output into the bottom of that alpha over, and you can see our scale is off, so let's just duplicate this scale node by pressing shift D and dropping that in, and boom, there we have our masked out billboard. So um, if you click Let's see, I'm going to duplicate this scale node one more time, Shift D, and feed it into that plane. So if you click on this, we have our scale, and if you click on that, the plane output, we have that mask. That's what I was telling you about that can be very useful for so many applications. For now, let's jump back to this alpha over node, Control Shift, click, and let's get into uh, replacing this image. So this is really easy. We're just going to add in an image texture or an image node and find whatever image you want to replace your billboard with. So I've created uh, in Photoshop this uh, apocalyptic aliens are coming billboard danger and you can see you just feed it right into that plane track deform and if you scrub through your footage that image now deforms perfectly to our billboard. No camera tracking needed and it's just perfectly in place. Just really exciting how easy that is and you can see the potential this has if you want to replace a TV screen or a jumbotron or something just take a movie clip node and feed it directly into that image input and you have a whole nother movie clip going on there you know really really easy so many applications we can use this for so that's it that's the plane tracking uh, you can see how easy it is now I'm going to show you how we can utilize this mask that it created for us in the background. So I'm just going to jump to frame one. And let's say we want to put, say, a UFO in the background, but we want it behind that billboard. And we don't necessarily want to mask out everything and animate that mask. Well, we already have a mask perfectly animated for us right here. So we're going to use that. I'm going to jump to the default menu. I'll select my camera, clear the rotation and the location. I'm going to delete this cube and I'm just going to press R, X, and 90, rotate that camera by 90 degrees. And I'll press 0 to look through it. Press N to bring up the sidebar. We'll check our background image, uh, change it to movie clip, uncheck camera clip, and there we have our footage right there. And Let's say, like I said, we want to add in a UFO. So I'm going to append in a model of a UFO I made. Okay, so I have this model of a UFO. It's very simple, nothing very exciting at all about it. Um, let's just turn on ambient occlusion so you can see it. And I'm going to scale it and sort of move it into position so that some of it is behind that billboard and some of it is sort of you know, lurking in the background want to make it look like it's sort of off in the distance. So let's press Shift Z, see what our model looks like. There, looks great. Okay. And now we want to composite this with our footage. So let's go to our render settings. We want to make sure we check transparent. 
and I'll turn the samplings up a bit, maybe 50, just to give you an idea of what we can do with this. And let's press render. So that renders out nicely. Let's jump back to compositing. Okay, now I have my render layer up here out of the way for us. Uh, if you deleted that, you want to make sure and bring it back and hit render again, otherwise it won't let you render anything. And we want to mix this, like I said, with our footage. So to do that, we need another alpha over node. So I'm going to duplicate this first alpha over and plug our image directly into the bottom of that alpha over. And now we have our spaceship in front of our billboard and we want to put it behind. So this is very easy. Let's add in a mix node and plug that in in between the alpha over. And I'm going to take the output of our mask, which is plugged into a scale node. So the mask, remember, is the plane in this plane track deform node. Take this output into the fac of that mix node. And I'll take the alpha over node of our entire scene. So the first alpha over node, hopefully this isn't getting too confusing. First alpha over node that has everything composited with our billboard. We'll plug that into the bottom of that mix node. And now if we view this alpha over, boom. You see we have our mask plugged into the factor of these two images mixed together and now our image is behind that billboard and you can see there's a little bit of bleeding through of our UFO. So to get rid of that, let's just check convert pre-multiply on the second alpha over and that takes care of that perfectly. So there you go, a perfect mask and it's animated all the way through, obviously our spaceship isn't animated but you don't have to worry about moving that mask around or tracking it or anything. It's perfectly in place. Now, I should note that one of the reasons we have the mask plugged into a mix node and then into the alpha over, rather, direct, rather than directly into the fac of the alpha over, is so that we can adjust this factor right here. So that you can make, you can turn down the factor and make it so that it looks like it's a little more part of the scene, a, that spaceship's a little more hazy in the background, and it just blends well. You can also do other things to make this blend, such as uh, maybe adding a blur node over this mask right here. So if I just add in a blur node, drop that in, and just change the X and Y and size value to one, that blurs that line ever so slightly so that that edge doesn't look jagged at all. And then of course you would probably want to, just for final blending of everything, make sure your composite node is hooked up and drop in a color balance node and mix these things together, maybe boost the lights. I always like to boost the yellows a little bit and then take the darks down to add some contrast and then boost the blues a little. And then you'll wanna make sure that that's plugged into your composite node as well. And then one final thing I would do if I were to do, render a final animation is add in a simple glare node, change it from streaks to fog glow just so we have that those lights glowing. Actually, the streaks looks kind of cool. I'll leave it on streaks for now. Maybe take the fade down a bit. And there you go. You're ready to render out your animation. So you'd want to animate that spaceship however you'd like, but you can see how quickly we've knocked out a very simple visual effect inside of Blender using this plain track deform node really powerful and so many applications. You can use it to replace a TV screen or a jumbotron or even just a sm simple picture frame. You want the image to be something different. This is the way to go. Really easy and a lot of fun. So that's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see other Blender tutorials, especially on visual effects, I tend to do a lot of those, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. As always, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you in the next Blender Branch tutorial.